<sighs> you thought Rise of Skywalker had fan service. Get ready for this, except in this one, it's good and not stupid. Welcome to the Rise of Skywalker rewrite part 3. If you have not seen parts 1 and 2, I would absolutely recommend checking them out now. The link is in the video description. If you haven't seen them in a while, I'd still give them a look, but hey, maybe you're busy. Who knows? Here's a quick recap of everything that happened so far. If you don't need it, you can go to this time in the video. Okay. Kylo Ren executes General Hux and replaces him with a scientist named General Pride. Ray, Finn, Poe, Rose, BB-8, and Claude go on a mission to discover what the First Order is after on the planet Batu. It turns out Kylo Ren has plans that involve a new form of Kyber, the Force-sensitive mineral that's used in lightsabers in the Death Star. During their mission, the heroes are ambushed by two Knights of Ren, one of whom Ray fights. During the escape, Poe shoots two stormtroopers, who he is not aware are surrendering to Finn and attempting to switch sides. The team travels back to the new Resistance base on Cloud City and has a meeting with the other Resistance leaders that is interrupted by a fleet of First Order starfighters. The older characters are captured as Ray, Finn, Poe, Rose, BB-8, and Claude escape. They travel to Savarine, a planet that Lando believes may be where the Kyber was refined. Poe and Finn get into an argument about the stormtroopers that Poe killed. Ray and Rose talk about a contingency plan in case they get captured. On Savarine, the team is caught by the new governor of Savarine, Zori Bliss, who Poe is able to figure out is actually his old friend, Xena Breen. Xena was a New Republic pilot who disappeared after her best friend was killed. She gave up fighting, created a new identity, and made a life for herself running a refinery planet. Back on the First Order ship, Kylo Ren interrogates some Resistance captains, including Chewbacca, and eventually learns where our heroes were going. Poe, Rose, BB-8, and Claude try to figure out the team's next move. Finn talks to Zori about leaving the war. Rey communes with the Kyber and accidentally force Skypes with Kylo Ren, who is just entering the atmosphere of Savarine, along with the rest of the First Order forces. Okay. Ah, the holy midpoint. I put a lot of stock in the midpoint, not only because it's usually one of the most exciting moments in a movie, but because a poorly structured movie is usually missing a midpoint. Like, there's a center somewhere in the middle, but nothing interesting happens. No monkey wrenches are thrown. No revelations, just more of the same. And a bad midpoint usually means people are going to start checking their watch because pacing is now a problem. Now, the original Star Wars Rise of Skywalker absolutely has a midpoint problem. Halfway through the movie, Kylo Ren reveals to Rey that she is Palpatine's granddaughter, and also that they're a Force dyad, and also that he wants to team up with Rey to kill Palpatine. Let's take those one at a time. The Palpatine reveal. While canonically significant, it doesn't make much of a story difference. It doesn't change Rey's goal. She still wants to stop Palpatine. She feels a little conflicted, but that's been her vibe throughout the entire movie. Force dyads, they don't matter. We don't know what they are or have any meaningful previous experience with them. So, like, who cares? And then Kylo's plan. It is what we and Rey have known this entire movie and also exactly what he did last movie. Kylo Ren killed his mentor. This isn't a surprise to us or the main characters and doesn't change the plot in any way. Honestly, a midpoint reveal that he's actually serious about working with Palpatine would make way more of an impact. Wouldn't make all that much sense, but it's a more effective midpoint. That kind of change in the momentum of the plot is the kind of thing we need to keep the audience engaged. So here's our midpoint. The First Order breaches the atmosphere of Savarine and lands on the beach. Poe, Rose, BB-8, and Claude scramble into their ship and take off, just narrowly missing the First Order landers. They call Rey and Finn. They say, you guys need to get somewhere where we can pick you up. Um, now meet us at the hangar we saw on the way in. And hurry! Rey starts running towards the hangar. There's explosions because the First Order is bombing the refinery. Rey survives, but she can't leave the way she came in. So she starts running down hallways, trying to find a way out. Finn is with Zori. And she offers her hand, says, quick, I can hide you. Then Ray passes Finn and says, come on, they're in the hangar. And for half a second, 
Finn pauses, but then immediately goes with Rey. Zori watches them run away together, and, like, she sees it again. The bond that she shared with her wingman between Rey and Finn. This affects Zori. Rey and Finn run through the compound and make it onto the ship. They jump in, manage to avoid a bit of fire, and Poe punches it. They made it to light speed. But as they are about to jump, the ship stops, rattles, and is pulled out of light speed. Finn yells, come on! Poe says, it's not me, something's got us. Ray looks out the back window of the ship and she sees Kylo Ren. He is standing on the top of his hovering shuttle, holding his hand out, using the force to pull their ship out of light speed. Kylo begins to pull their ship towards him. Poe screams, quick, the escape pods. Everyone gets their things, runs into their own escape pod. BB-8 goes with Poe. Poe yells, we'll meet up at the refinery. Then Poe throws a grenade, which destroys the ship and stuns Kylo Ren as they all launch safely in their escape pods. Our heroes land in different parts of the forest. They all start radioing each other, check in, and then start making their way towards the refinery. Rey is alone, with only her staff, her bag of books, her lightsaber. Oh, by the way, they reforged Luke's lightsaber. I guess I should probably have a bit of conversation between Leia and Rey earlier in the movie where that's made clear, but it shows up the same way that it shows up in the original Rise of Skywalker. Anyway, I got that question a lot. But Rey is alone in the forest, jumping, running, and she meets Kylo Ren. He slowly walks out of the forest wearing his new armor. There's a faint red glow. Rey charges at Kylo, and they have a short duel. The rest of the team is each making their way through the forest, and we see each is being stalked by a knight of Ren. Kylo tells Rey, it's over. Rey says, you'll never win. Kylo says, I already have. I've taken control of the First Order, captured the leaders of the Resistance. Luke Skywalker is dead, and I finally have the last thing I need. Kylo holds out his hand. Ray says, I'll never join you. Kylo says, again, it's not always about you. And then one of the books flies out of Ray's bag into Kylo's hand. He says, wish I read this when I was one of his students. Would have saved me a lot of trouble. Then Ray and Kylo fight a bit more. We check in on the rest of the team members, each getting caught by a Knight of Ren. Rose and Claude first. Then Finn has a fight with one of them before being knocked down and seemingly out. Poe and BB-8 manage to evade their knight and make it into the refinery, but while running through the compound, he finds a stormtrooper, sweeping the hallways. Poe has the drop on the stormtrooper, pulls his blaster, the stormtrooper turns around and pleads with Poe. He hesitates, but then he lets her go. She runs in another direction. Before, Poe is caught by the Knight of Ren he thought he had evaded. So Kylo approaches Rey. His armor glows brighter. You don't know what this Kyber gives me the ability to do. I am more powerful than any Jedi or Sith before me, and I will use it to reshape the galaxy under my control. I don't need you anymore. Kylo gets the upper hand on Rey, knocks her down, gets ready to execute her, but then blast hits Kylo, huge, knocking him into the forest. Rey looks up and sees a ship being piloted by Zori Bliss. It lowers and a door opens with Finn holding his hand out to Rey. She grabs her lightsaber, jumps into the ship. Kylo Ren comes to as the ship jumps to light speed. He's upset, but he has the book and that's all he needs to complete his plan. And that's your midpoint. Our heroes are even further defeated and Kylo Ren has everything he needs. Now we're in the second half of Act 2. Our heroes are going to hit their low points, but learn something about themselves. Poe, Rose, BB-8, and Claude are all brought to the new First Order ship and thrown into cells. General Pride visits Poe, he gets to gloat a bit, mentions that he fought against Poe's mother a long time ago. He's happy to see this pathetic Dameron line end with Poe. Then we check in with our other heroes, Rey, Finn, and now, Zori. Zori asks where they can go, if Finn or Rey know anywhere safe. 
Ray tells Zori where to find Ak-2. So they land on Ak-2, and things are looking pretty bleak. Most of the resistance is captured. Kylo Ren has the last piece of his plan, and Ray gave it to him. And worst of all, they still don't know what Kylo Ren is up to. Finn asks Ray which book Kylo Ren stole from her, and Ray tells Finn that she thinks it's a book about Jedi temples, which is weird, because Palpatine had all of the remaining Jedi temples destroyed while he was in power. Kylo Ren must be after something else in the book. Ray then starts looking around the island, while Finn and Zori look at the ship, which needs some repairs. Ray is trying to make contact with Luke Skywalker's ghost. She's heard that there's a way to contact Force ghosts, but she never really learned it herself. But Luke Skywalker must be here, so she calls to him. Ray goes to the hut where Luke lived. Nothing. She goes to the tree where Luke kept the books. Nothing. She goes to the cliff where Luke taught her how to use the Force, and unbeknownst to her, he died. And still, she sees nothing. She is not able to make a connection. Ray yells, I did everything you taught me. I trained to use the Force. I studied all the Jedi text. What else do I need to do? Then Rey throws the lightsaber away and it hits the ground near her. Nothing. Luke is not going to save her. Finn and Zori are watching Rey from the ground and Zori tells Finn to talk to her. She needs him. Finn isn't so sure. She doesn't need me. Rey closed herself off. She doesn't need anyone. Zori replies, Everyone needs a friend. Trust me, it's not too late. So Finn walks up to Rey, picks up the lightsaber, hands it to her. He believed in you, he says. Even if he isn't here anymore, Luke knew you could do this. Rey says, Luke's gone. They all are. Finn says, No one is ever really gone. They're here. In the Force. You told me that. It was Luke's first lesson, right? Rey says, Yes, the Force, it's, it's balance between all things. Ray closes her eyes and puts her hand on the ground. Then we're going to get a montage very similar to the one from Last Jedi, except this time we're going to see clips of our main characters from the sequel trilogy. Ray says, between life and death, peace and violence, between kindness and malice, between the past and the future, between hope and fear. Then for a brief second, Ray sees Kylo Ren holding the book he stole. It's Kylo at this very moment. Kylo sees Ray and is scared. He drops the book. Ray opens her eyes and she says, I know where he's going. Ray comes down the mountain with Finn and they meet Zori at the ship. Zori says, I know that look. Ray explains, the book. It was about the ancient Jedi temples, and Kylo wanted it so that he could find one. Zori says, but you said Palpatine destroyed them all. Finn says, Palpatine destroyed all the Jedi temples he thought were left. But what if there was one he assumed was already destroyed, and it wasn't? They run into the ship and open up the computer. Finn starts browsing through a map. Ray continues, one of the only temples that was destroyed before Palpatine had a chance to was on a desert moon, mid-rim, in the Jeddah system. Uh, here. Zori says, I thought the only city on that planet was destroyed in a mining disaster. Vin says, yeah, that's the story, but there were rumors that it was actually the first Death Star. Zori says, okay, but it's gone. Ray says, sort of. Some of the temple was destroyed, but that was actually just a small part of the real temple. Only the Jedi and a few guardians knew about the rest. The text said that somewhere in the desert there is a second, much larger temple. Finn says, one Palpatine wouldn't have known about. Zori says, so that's where he's going. Finn says, yeah, and it gets better. Guess what the temple is apparently full of? Zori doesn't know. Finn says, Kyber. Ray says, yeah, statues, altars, some chambers are even carved out of Kyber. Then Zori catches on. So whatever he's doing with the Kyber, he wants more of it, and he can get it from here. Finn says, that's what it looks like. 
Rey, so we need to get to Jeddah and stop him. Zuri butts in, but the ship still needs plenty of repairs. It's going to be a bit before we can fix it. Is there another ship here? Rey realizes that there might be one. Keep working on this, Rey says as she goes off with Finn to the part of the island where they find Luke's drowned X-Wing. Finn asks, you think it still works? Rey says, only one way to find out. And Rey, not Luke, Rey pulls the ship out of the water and it turns on. Rey says, I can't go without you. Finn says, yes you can. We'll be right behind you. Rey hugs Finn. Finn says, may the force be with you. Ray nods, she gets into the ship, and leaves. Now he wants some serious fan service. Then we zoom out, we see the ghost of Luke watching on. He says, I told you. It took a little time, but she figured it out. Then we pan over and see the ghost of Han, who smiles and says, I know. Then Luke gives Han like a little side shoulder hug, and they disappear. Then we do a wipe to Kylo Ren on Jeddah. He approaches the temple door and opens it. Kylo walks through the door slowly, lighting the room with his lightsaber, and he sees a long descending staircase. Then Kylo hears a noise, looks around, sees nothing. He moves forward, hears another noise. This time behind him, Kylo yells, Who's there? And from the shadows emerges, get ready for this, Chirrut Imwe. He is the faint bluish glow of a force ghost. Kylo asks, Who are you? Chirrut answers, I am the guardian of this temple. Who are you? Kylo brushes past Chirrut. I don't have time for this. Chirrut appears in front of Kylo. Funny. I have nothing but time. You can have some of mine. Kylo asks, Am I going to have to fight you? Chirrut says, No, no. It's later. Not with me. I'm here to warn you of something. A warning you'll likely ignore, but still, this is my duty. You cannot corrupt the heart of Kyber without a cost. Kylo Ren says, Is that all? Chirrut says, It is. And then Kylo leaves as Chirrut says to himself, I am one with the Force. The Force is with me as he disappears. Last scene before the third act. This is our second big plot point. Besides those other two, which are also big plot points, but this is another one. Poe is in his cell, and a stormtrooper approaches. She says, Poe Dameron? Poe says, Eh, hey, what do you want? She replies, why did you let me go? Poe's confused. On Savarine, you had to drop on me, but you let me go. Why? Poe thinks for a second and says, because, uh, because it's the right thing to do. The stormtrooper laughs and says, ha, who told you that? Finn? Poe answers, actually, yeah, he did. And then she stops laughing. Wait, what? Bo says, it's what Finn said. Last conversation we had before she interrupts. Wait, Finn is real? Poe says, yeah, he's my friend. Didn't you guys capture him too? She says, whoa, whoa, whoa. The Finn, FN2187, the deserter. He's real. Poe says, yeah, why do you care so much? She says, Finn is a legend here. There are legions of stormtroopers who practically worship him. He got out, destroyed Starkiller base, killed Phasma. Could you bring us to him? Poe says, well, first I need to get out of here, and I don't know where he is. Then Poe thinks, but if I get him here, she says, so many would join him. Poe says, we could finally destroy the First Order. I need to send a message. So that's Act 2. Our heroes don't have all the information, like they don't know exactly what Kylo Ren's doing, but they have enough of an idea to start moving forward, and more importantly, they've all learned a lesson and all grown a little bit from the beginning of the movie, and this new growth is what is going to help them succeed in Act 3, which we will get to in Part 4 of The Rise of Skywalker Rewrite. Oh, and one more thing. You have definitely heard me talk about Nebula before. It's a wonderful subscription streaming service made by me and a bunch of other top educational creators. You watch our videos without ads, you support the creators you love, and watch Nebula original videos. I have made three about the title sequences for One Punch Man, Watchmen, and Doom Patrol. 
There's all kinds of other great Nebula originals by creators you already like. It's an awesome platform. You've also heard of CuriosityStream, a terrific subscription streaming service devoted to nonfiction programming, documentaries, stuff like that. Well, CuriosityStream and Nebula, we have created a bundle. You've probably heard me talk about that before. If you sign up for Curiosity Stream at the link in this description, you get a free Nebula subscription for free, which is pretty good because you can go watch all kinds of great Nebula content. You'd watch some Curiosity Stream documentaries like Samuel L. Jackson and Latanya Richardson Jackson's episode of Beyond the Spotlight, where they talk about their activism. And also, fun fact Samuel L. Jackson's grandfather was actually an elevator operator. So that thing that Nick Fury says in The Winter Soldier, that's actually a thing that Samuel L. Jackson's grandfather did. Isn't that interesting? And there is a 26% discount on the annual plan for Curiosity Stream. So you get that, boom, you've got Curiosity Stream and you've got Nebula. However, even better than that, if you happen to be watching this video between November 25th and November 29th in 2020, that means you're getting a Black Friday discount, which is 41% off. So on this wonderful Black Friday, you can get a Curiosity Stream yearly subscription. That is an annual plan for less than 12 bucks. That is less than a dollar a month. It is as good as this deal has ever been. You get access to Curiosity Stream. You get access to Nebula. All of our videos early, all the Nebula original exclusive videos, and everything we're going to work on for the next year. It is a terrific deal. Go to curiositystream.com slash nandovmovies or click the link in the episode description and sign up today. Watch all of those things I said. It's awesome. As always, I have to give a humongous thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys are amazing. If you want to see your name up here, get access to videos early, other cool stuff like watch whiteboard videos, decide what the whiteboard videos are about, and be part of the book club. This month, at the end of November, we're going to be doing uh, the Tom King Vision book, which is going to be really interesting. I, I just really like that book, and also it'll be a fun lead up to WandaVision. Also, listen to my podcast, Mostly Nitpicking, where every week, me and my friends DJ and Diggins pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. We have done episodes about all the Star Wars movies that have come out in the last couple of years, and the episode we are going to record, which we're going to record tomorrow, is going to be about New Mutants, the movie, which I've seen. And uh, like, I've read the comics to get ready for this. I am so excited to talk about all the things that are so weird about the, the movie New Mutants, which is a real thing, unless, like, I hallucinated it, which is possible because it's New Mutants, and, like, it's very possible that I didn't actually see the movie that I thought I saw. But if I saw it, I have a lot to say. Uh, I'll probably make a video about that soon. Maybe even that will be the next video that I make. But until then, if you want to hear my thoughts, it's mostly nitpicking. You can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. We are at Nitpicking Pod on Twitter. Last thing, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, where I post updates on videos, podcasts, all kinds of other cool stuff that I'm working on. It's a lot of fun. That's all I got. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.